Take two. <laughs> this is the totally the first time we're talking about this. <laughs> we didn't really quite get into the movie yet. We were mainly talking about comments from Terminator Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> now I promised I would not leave the car because then you'd get all weird and crazy and want to jump out the window and shit. <laughs> According to this cr- backstory that they've created for you in Terminator Genesis. I just love the one that said I was too down to fuck to let you finish the review. Hey, hey, do you mind? I'm trying to talk Terminator here. Here. That one was definitely my favorite. I realize you're totes DTF. I'm trying to talk about my disappointment in Kyle Reese with this movie. I will be with you in 37 minutes. Or however long that video was. It was about 37 minutes. I was timing it because you weren't paying attention to me. I did say at the beginning, give me 37 minutes and I'll talk about this movie. 25 seconds too long. So that one was your favorite comment? Oh my god, yeah. No, mine was... um. Uh, what was mine again? Oh, mine was, um, um, damn, Brad's girlfriends keep getting hotter and hotter. I can't wait to see the next one. <laughs> I heard you sit, <laughs> you saw it before I did, and I heard you. That was a fucking roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> that comment, that was a fucking roller coaster of a comment. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I didn't have a whole lot to say about Terminator Genesis. I hadn't seen the second three. There's five now, right? Terminator Genesis was the fifth. Yeah, I, I only saw the first one and now the fifth one. Um, so I didn't have and a whole lot to say. And according to ter- the comments in Terminator Genesis, since you haven't seen Terminator 2... That means you haven't seen any movies. I haven't seen any movie ever. (laughs) (laughs) But I should have a ton to say about this movie. Flags of Our Fathers? Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Our first religious movie together. This is why we need... Yeah, this is why we need dads. (laughs) Women, this is why we need dads. <laughs> oh my god when he said that i leaned over i was like he did not just say that i leaned over what did he just say and in the middle of the theater you're women this is why we need to i loved hearing i don't even know what that was supposed to mean i'm sitting there like is that a slight against either single parenting or having two moms or it didn't say that his fiance was raised by a single parent or had two moms I didn't get it either. It was so out of nowhere. It was like they were just quoting something from Kevin Sorbo's Facebook page. Which is make which makes sense. This has some links to God's Not Dead. So faith of our fathers. Um, this was amazing. I, I was loving this from not loving this, loving this. <laughs> That's gonna be taken out of context. I was I was into this from the first three minutes because the first line that like one of the first lines was when the uh the fiance comes over and she's like, I can't wait for a month when we're married and we can finally start living together. Oh, I was so glad that was Candace Cameron. <laughs> Too. Like, I was. So, was it? I didn't yes. even notice that. Oh my god. That's that's why, like, when her name popped up in the opening credits, if you heard me next to you go, of course. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> like, because why wouldn't she be in this? Candace Cameron is the wife. She says that line at the beginning when she pulls up that's to Dude's house. That's one of the house. first lines. Oh yeah, it is. It is one of the first lines in the movie, and I'm like, oh man, I'm really glad they established that because I did not want to think they were living in sin. And like, then there was like 20 jokes about pizza oh yeah so the movie starts out with uh it it, most of it's taking place like in 97 and so it starts out and dude and candace cameron they're engaged they're about to get married but don't worry they're not sleeping together yet (laughs) They established that they haven't moved in together, so it's okay. It was definitely Don't be one scared. of those lines where, like, like she was telling him something he clearly already knows. Oh yeah, it was it was just a t- for the audience. Oh yeah, it was a total exposition line, totally like, well, as your fiance, yeah, I move in here and we don't live together yet. Yeah. Um, oh thank God. Oh man, I was really nervous that they were shacking up before they before they tied the knot. At least he can be in the same room with her, though. Yeah, I made that joke. Like, when they were having yeah. the fight, I'm like, J- Jude, count your blessings. At least he'll be in the same room with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man. And there, there's all this dialogue about, like, Candace Cameron's dialogue in this movie, oh my god, amounts to just, like, 
happy, cheery wife to be. Like, I'm gonna make pizza for you tonight, darling. Well, no, she was gonna make something involved. Like, literally, asparagus. the only thing you saw was asparagus. So yeah. apparently, she was making asparagus. It's like, um, what about asparagus? You can't make asparagus pizza, silly. Come on, that's as that's as crazy as us living together before we're married. You can't combine those two. Yeah, because there was like. <laughs> There was the line that, like, she fucked up the lasagna. Yeah. And so he was, oh. like, worried and kept trying to convince her to get a pizza. Mm -hmm. Um, And she, like, takes out the asparagus and, like, weighs it enticingly at him. And he's like, oh, you know what? Would this, would be, this would be really great on a pizza. And she's just kind of like, oh, you. You. <laughs> asparagus pizza. That doesn't work. No, no, no pizza. No, no, no. No, no, no pizza. <laughs> no pizza. That doesn't work. No. I'm sitting there like, okay, this Cameron, you still got it. I didn't even notice that was her. Like, now that I you was mentioned one... it, I noticed. Oh, this but... is a Samuel Goldwyn production. The last time I saw that in front of a movie, it was Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. <laughs> There's so many scenes in a car in this movie, it's kind of like saving Christmas if they were driving the car. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so, flags, flags of our fathers, and sorry. Faith of our fathers. Uh, okay, I'll, I can sum it up for you like this. The two main characters in the movie are named John and Wayne. No, 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 it's John Paul George. Oh, yeah, just in case John and Wayne wasn't dumb enough, <laughs> we're going to go meet our aunts, Maureen and O'Hara, with our dads, Dean and Martin. <laughs> John and Wayne, and his first name, yeah, or his full name, like, John Paul George. And, and they make that joke a lot, like, like all the, the time. Beatles. All the time. Like the Beatles? Yeah, like the Beatles. Wayne in the movie refers to him as Ringo all the time. John Paul George. It was dumb enough with just John and Wayne, but John Paul George. Here's my main <laughs> character. Mick Ron Keith. <laughs> Bruce Clarence Stevie. <laughs> Fuck. John Paul George. Wow. So, okay. So, how does this go? He wants to find out about his dad who died in Vietnam. He, uh, John Paul George does. I, he's cleaning out boxes from his mom or mm -hmm. something. Um, and he finds a box that has, like, keep written on it. So he opens up the box, and it has, like, his dad's dog tags, a folded-up flag, and the picture of, um, like, the the two dads. And on the back is, it's just written, like, it's, like, me and, what was the dad's name? The other dad's name. It was, like, Stephen George. And mm -hmm. I remember the other one, because the other one was Eddie Adams, which right. was throwing me off every time, because Eddie Adams is Dirk Diggler's name. <laughs> like, oh man, his dad's a porn star! Yeah. Oh, I like where this is going. <laughs> oh no, Eddie Adams converted! He's not Dirk Diggler anymore! Boo! But yeah, on the back it was, like, me and uh, Edward C. Adams, and so, like, he starts calling people to find oh, out. Oh, this, this part was ridiculous. There's this whole montage in it where he's calling calling different Eddie Adams and some people are and he's like oh sorry wrong number or something like yeah, that. Yeah there's one where he's just like oh oh my condolences. Yeah. <laughs> Which like that still could be the guy. Yeah it could be the guy. <laughs> oh, yeah that could be the guy or uh why was there a 12 year old kid listed in this shit that I was, was kind of wondering at? that too. Yeah <laughs> he lists their 12 year old in the phone book. <laughs> Unless he lives by himself. I don't know. I want to see that kid's story. Yeah, what's this? And this whole time, you can see Candace Cameron in the background, um, just like chopping up like the same piece of asparagus. Yeah. So this is, I guess, only taking him like five seconds because she has not moved. She has not stopped chopping the same pieces of vegetables. Yeah, eventually, wow. like she um is like just standing in the kitchen doing nothing, and then she's like, oh no, and runs over to the mm -hmm. thing, and the next scene is them eating a pizza. Well, well, he's eating a pizza. She's just just eating raw asparagus. It's like, honey, you're the best cook. She's what? And he's no like, one can order pizza like you can. <laughs> oh, silly! Is this what we have to look forward to when we move in together after we're married? <laughs> uh, so he finds he finds the right 
Eddie Adams, but the, the but Eddie Adams also died in Vietnam, so it's his kid, the Wayne of John Wayne, um, <laughs> who lives in Mississippi, and so the main dude, John Paul George, is I'm pretty sure he was in Mom's Night Out, and the dude who plays uh, Wayne. I've seen in a few of these movies. He was like fun preacher or like comic relief preacher in God's Not Dead. And uh, I'm pretty sure he was also in Do You Believe? Like I've, I've seen him in a few Sorry, of these. Sorry, we were getting weird looks. Were we <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a couple of freedom hating bastards in that truck. <laughs> <laughs> I say it's dude just walked by. <laughs> no, I, I was a kid, man. Uh, <laughs> I like your jogging suit. Christopher Moltisante. <laughs> so, oh no, oh no, I need to stop giggling. They found that really goddamn annoying. Oh, uh, what are you doing? Yeah, I, you can't giggle because I clearly never giggle in these. The one commenter who was like, take a shot every time she giggles. No, no, take a shot every time I giggle in one of these. You'll be way fucking drunker. <laughs> See? It's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more adorable when you do it with me. <laughs> See, take another shot. So, uh, okay, so he goes to Mississippi to find Wayne Adams, and it's it's comic relief preacher from God's Not Dead who talks in. I don't even know what kind of accent he's using. Like, it's yeah. supposed to be, like, southern, but he sounds like if, like, a Godfrey Ho villain or, like, me and Hooker with a Heart of Gold only talked through belches. Yeah. Like, the first time he lets him in, like, his, like, house shack thing. I, uh, when he was on the phone, because, like, you can, you can hear, um... You can hear, like, Wayne on the phone. Like, yeah. as every bit as clearly as you can hear John Paul George on the phone. Yeah. Which makes it really funny when, uh, I can't even remember his wife's name, Candace, um, <laughs> is like, what did he say? I'm like, you fucking heard! You heard that <laughs> shit! He's in the next room, you fucking heard him! But when he, uh, when he was on the phone, I thought he was, like, deliberately using, like, a fake, aggressive voice or something. Right. Like, I thought that was supposed to just be, like, him trying to intimidate them. I think it was supposed to, like, because it was supposed to throw us off as if we're thinking that that's the Ed, the older Eddie Adams guy, so it did sound like an older voice, but unfortunately, because he uses this voice on the phone that can be confused for an older guy, he has to use this voice throughout the whole movie, mm -hmm. and it's really gross. It's like the first scene the two have together is when they're in his, they're in Wayne's house, and Wayne is just like talking through eating corn, and it's just nasty. It's really right? gross. What are you doing here in my house? <laughs> well, look, uh, I just decided to let you in uh, just out of the kindness of my heart. I made no, no, you no, wait. I like... made you wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I made you wait out there twelve hours to uh, <laughs> so you know that we were se that you were <laughs> that you were serious. <laughs> now I'm going to bed. Yeah. Then tosses half piece of corn on the table and is just like I'm tired of going to bed. <laughs> and then like John is trying to like sleep on the tiny couch and talking to Cam Candace Cameron. He's like, I don't know, this guy's like really weird and stuff. I I don't know. He makes me really nervous. And then the guy just comes right behind him, just crotch right by the back of the guy's head, like, You want coffee? I'm tired, I can't sleep. I'm gonna have some coffee. Cause that's what you do when you can't sleep. <laughs> yeah, he's even like it helps me sleep. Like, it helps what, me what sleep. <laughs> it's technically not coffee. It's actually <laughs> melted molasses that I got off of the engine of my truck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and they, okay, so they both want to, they both aren't sure what happened to their dads in Vietnam, but um, Wayne has some letters that were written to that were written by his dad or yeah they were written okay. by his dad they were written by his dad and they he's going to he 
the letters kind of contain some information that John might need about his dad, and so they decide to go on a road trip. Or they don't they don't decide. It's the Wayne guys like road road trip. Well, he's like chainsawing the roof off his yeah. car. Every road trip he needs a convertible, so he's chainsawing the roof off of the car. And then he bitches about the car they have to take later, and he's like, "I want my other car back. I that was a good car." Like you chainsawed the car, the roof off of it. It was very nice. <laughs> when they took the roof off of it, though. I mean, that took some hard work. It probably woke up the neighbors. Like he said, he was concerned about his neighbors. Not from the chainsaw, yeah, but because no, of he, John Yeah, no, he, like, tells John to shut up because he doesn't want to wake the neighbors. And that green screen. Like I said, I could hear the film school party coming out during this with the rain and the green screen. <laughs> Do we have... Or the the part where they're in the car... Okay, so they're in the car at this one point. I'm, I, I might have this slightly out of order. But uh, they're in the car, and uh, Wayne says he can't go through Alabama. Um, oh my god! That like... went on forever! There's like a 15 minute long scene where like John just keeps being like, "Why well, can't you go through Alabama?" And he's like, "I can't. I'm not telling you." About Why aren't you that. going through Alabama? I am not telling you. Why can't we go through and, Alabama? I don't want to talk about it. And then Wayne just starts like wordlessly yelling. Yeah. He's just like, "Alabama! Alabama! Why can't we go through Alabama?" Yeah. Like, Alabama. Through Alabama. <laughs> For 15 minutes. Meanwhile, worst green screen <laughs> fucking ever in this shit. It would have been more convincing if they used that green blanket that we had as a prop in the Snob movie as a green screen. You could, wow, like I am seeing this in the theater. Wow. Like, the green it, screen wasn't even going the right way. Did you notice that? Yes. It looked like they were driving their car backwards. Yes. <laughs> it looked like they were driving their car backwards. You could see the fuzz like on the side of their face and shit. Like, you can see the outline of it across their skin. And there's a, this is a road trip movie. There's a lot of driving in this movie, so there was a lot of bad green screen in this movie. Oh. Wow! Do you still have a uh, the picture of it on your phone? I do, but my phone is oh, so it's buried weird. down there. Yeah. We took a picture. I'll post it online later on. Son of a bitch! Every I wish we would have gotten like the the day shot though, because like the night is still pretty bad. Like it's oh. still a bad shot, but during yeah. the day it was so much worse. Like at least at night you almost couldn't tell that they were driving backwards down the highway. Yeah, almost. <laughs> they... I love the part where they just pass a sign that randomly says church. <laughs> that gave me the idea to pull out his Bible. That was my favorite part. Rope, caution, church crossing. <laughs> it literally, it's like one of those, like, like, uh, I forgot the name of shapes. Like, oh, one of those little, like, kind of diamond signs. Or, yeah, like, like a rhombus-shaped yeah. sign that just says the word church. Mm -hmm. Which, they're on the highway. Uh, Where's their highway. church? Church <laughs> highway. That was some rural road shit, though. Like, there might be a church across the... In that part of the country? I can believe it. I totally can. Like, hell, this is like the same act in the film where the fucking guy, Wayne, is giving John uh, relationship advice, and his advice is to just slap her. Yeah! <laughs> or like, uh, slap when they're her. at the, uh... Slap, her. slap, slap, slap her. When they're at the gas station, and she calls, and yeah. he, uh, like, Wayne takes the phone from him, and, uh, he's like, uh, I, like... He says something along the lines of, like, you know, uh, he really misses you. Uh, you're all he's been talking about this whole time, but he'll be back soon. And then he hangs mm -hmm. up and he's like, you don't know how to deal with them. You just got to tell them what they want to hear, whether it's true or not. Yeah, he's going through, like, worst stand-up routine ever half of the time. <laughs> it's like there's no jokes. He's just saying, like, shit that would make, like, the fucking guy in the audience for old-fashioned laugh. Oh, God. I've never met a man I like better than chocolate, and I've been married three times. Oh, God. <laughs> Speaking of the gas station, though, I don't know if this guy was actually from Duck Dynasty. He was. Was he? Okay. He was. At the ending credits, it had his name and said, as himself. Okay. So I guess he sells jerky at a gas station. I don't know. Oh, my fucking God. That went on so goddamn long. Like, the police show up, and he just goes into, like, a 20-minute long spiel of, like, well, there was... Because... Okay. It's one While of the they're outside, um, 
like this truck pulls up while John is on the phone and he's like, I miss you, I love you. And then like this truck of people pull up and they're like, I miss you, I love you. Ha ha ha, that's funny mm-hmm. somehow. Um, and then John goes in to buy something. I don't even remember what it was. Um, while either. Wayne stays out to, um, to fill up the gas tank. And uh, like it, it literally is one of those like, what are you looking at? Like, mm-hmm. it, like redneck in a hat or something stupid. Yeah, they try um, making Wayne look really badass in this scene, but with that voice and that hair and that facial hair, it looked like if you, like, I don't know, crossbred Chuck Norris with the guy from Old Fashioned. <laughs> honestly, yeah. And, uh, like, a fight breaks out. And by fight, I mean, as, like, when John looks out, one of them is holding Wayne down and the other one is beating him in the face. Yeah. So, like, any badassness that Wayne was supposed to have went right the fuck out the window. Because these mm-hmm. aren't, like, these aren't, like, giant intimidating guys that get out of no. this truck either. They're just normal dudes. But they are beating the shit out of Wayne. And, uh, like, John runs out to help him, and, uh, the Duck Dynasty dude, um, like, calls the police. What? What's going on? Ah, uh, what? What is, what's out there? What, 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 what's going on? What, what, what's going on out there? What is, I don't, and uh, then, like, what on, the hell? on the phone, he's, like, like, narrating it as if it's, like, a prize uh, fight or something. Oh, wow, and then the big one got a You're not gonna, gonna, gonna believe this. Ah, uh, ah, uh, <laughs> you won't believe this. Ah, uh, oh, my God, oh, my God. This is after he, like, tries to sell him beef jerky. That has Duck Dynasty on it. Did I didn't you notice, notice that? that. God damn it. That's when it hit me, like, I think this guy is from Duck Dynasty. I, like, when I saw him, I was like, this is Duck Dynasty looking motherfucker, but, like, I didn't know he was actually from I, Duck Dynasty. When it kept cutting back to him to do his shit. At that point, I was kind of like, he's got to be someone important. Yeah, it keeps cutting back to him doing this. What? I don't even. Big guy, get on, little guy. eh, You want some of this jerky? It's the best jerky, and it's got Duck Dynasty written Uh, on it. I don't don't watch Duck Dynasty. Um, I don't know if this is a running joke, but when John goes. He goes in there to buy something. I honestly can't remember what it is. Um, He goes in to buy something. Maybe a map? Is that what it was? He goes into the store to buy something, and the dude keeps trying to convince him to buy beef jerky. And without any hint of, like, this supposed to be a joke or anything, he's like, you should buy this beef jerky. It's so good you'll slap your mama. I forgot about that. (laughs) You'll slap your mama right in the face. You buy this beef jerky. And then when the, the cops show up, but after they have already left, like, they are down the street. Oh, yeah. They are way gone. Like, it, this is, like, ten minutes later, it cuts back to Duck Dynasty bro talking to the cops. Yeah. And, uh, like, it, that's that's when he has, like, his 20-minute, like, stand-up routine, basically. Yeah. Like, he's narrating what happened, and then every, like, two seconds, he's, like, like trying to pimp out this beef jerky. Be- and he, ma- he makes the, like, it'll you'll slap your mama joke again. Oh, yeah, like, he does like, it again. He's like, not my mama, my mama's big, she'd kick your ass, but, uh, you, you know, yo mama. Like... <laughs> But you must try this beef jerky that we have Duck Dynasty written across right here. Right I don't here, know how right I here. missed that. It did. That was that was between when it cut, kept cutting back to him and the fact that it kept saying Duck Dynasty on there, and that this is from like the producers of God's Not Dead, which yeah. had which also had one of the Duck Dynasty guys in it. Was it the same one? No, no, it was one of the younger ones and like his wife or something. I, uh, um the uh, but so it, it 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 was reminding me of granted this movie never gets as dark as this but like keep cu- cutting back to the bumbling cops from last house on the left like, yeah it just it just like which i guess ugh. does kind of have a payoff except it doesn't because the one cop that's relevant doesn't show up until the very end like, them getting arrested does kind of have a payoff because that, like, Mansfield dude ends up being a Oh, Stephen a cop. Baldwin. Yeah. Oh, um, that. Wow. Okay, so we should we should get into the fact that throughout all of this, it's cutting back to Vietnam. Yeah. And every single time, it is so jarring because there's no scene transitions no. or anything. It is just abruptly cutting back to Nam. As if to say, meanwhile, even though it's 30 years ago. Yeah, the first time it's like Vietnam 30 years ago. And then from that, like, but it doesn't do that. Oh, it never does that again. Not any kind of fade, not any kind of dissolve or transition or anything. There's one point where, like, the transition, 
like, makes it look like it's supposed to be, like, a meanwhile, because, like, they, like, pan up to show that it's raining on trees, oh, and then yeah. pan back down, and you're in Vietnam. Oh, that rain. Oh, God. That ra- <laughs> You're sitting next to me. Oh, my God, that rain. There's a part... Okay, first of all, Vietnam in this movie looks not unlike Chatham, Illinois, ten miles oh God, from oh where God, I God. live. The part where, like, he's like, I'm gonna go get bamboo, but those trees are not bamboo trees. He picks oh, no. up, like, a piece of prop bamboo that's laying on the ground. Yeah, it looks like... Okay... Max Fisher putting on a play of Vietnam in Rushmore was a thousand times more convincing than this. <laughs> this was... <laughs> now that I've said that, I'm worried I'm going to get a comment that says, no, this was actually filmed in Vietnam. Like, okay, well, they picked the shittiest part to film it in. There still it... wasn't any goddamn bamboo. Like, I'm no, not going to back no. down from that. There was no bamboo. No, it looks like just a rural road outside where they would film some where they would film a Friday the 13th It looked like movie. it could have been, like, panning over slightly from the road that they were on in Mississippi. Well, later on, when, like, John is sitting against the tree, reading, like, the final letter, and it's cutting back to the six to, to Nam and his dad reading the letter, they're leaning against the same tree! Yeah, it has <laughs> that, like... Like, the first scene has that really stupid, like, in every religious movie, like, there's always, like... Like, they are just being, like way more obnoxious than anyone ever would be about someone reading a Bible. Oh. Hey, look at Diggy Georgia with his little Bible. Ah, look at me. Look at me. I got a little Bible. <laughs> I like Jesus. I got a Bible. <laughs> Dude, this is numb. Yeah, they're even like, what, are you, like, scared or something? I'm like, yeah. you're in war. And then Stephen Baldwin, who... <laughs> Yeah. Stephen Baldwin is like the sergeant who's in charge of this unit. He's like, you need to stop reading that to my man. It's convincing them they're gonna die. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. man. And so, I mean, I miss 90s Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> like, usual suspect Stephen Baldwin. One tough cop Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> Hell, at this point, I'll settle for fled Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> I don't like this Stephen Baldwin. He looks like a handsome thumb. <laughs> he looks if a thumb were handsome that is what Stephen Baldwin looks that's like that's a bizarrely accurate description because yeah. <laughs> he's a Baldwin he's always going to be handsome but he looks like a thumb a really good looking one though <laughs> with crazy eyes kind of yeah. yeah there is there's some of that <laughs> yeah and so the uh John and Wayne, God, I feel stupid every time I say that. John and Bert and Lancaster. So John and Wayne, their car gets stolen at one point. Oh God, oh God, yeah, no, we need to talk about that in more yeah. detail. Um, <laughs> like, okay, first of all, at first I thought this was John and Wayne walking down the road when they first show the hitchhikers. Oh, they pan yeah. back and there are hitchhikers and I'm like, what the fuck happened to your car? Mm-hmm. Why are you just walking? now no these are two completely different people and one of them is wearing like their hood is up um and like pulled so it is completely blocking their face and like immediately i'm like so that one's a woman Mm -hmm. um but it's like this dude in a cowboy hat and like mysterious hooded figure um (laughs) and they pull over And, uh, which makes the reveal even dumber, because they're in, like, a scene. Yeah. Um, they pull over, and, uh, they're, the two of them are hitchhiking somewhere. One of them is Australian. Yeah, one of them's Australian. The girl, American accent. Something along those yeah. lines. Yeah, her accent kind of changes every scene. Like, at I... one point, she was kind of imitating the dudes, and, like, yeah. the, and then, like, she kind of had a southern accent, and then she yeah. just completely dropped her accent. Um... But, uh, yeah, so they, they pull over and they pick up these two hitchhikers, and, uh, like, it's kind of implied that they're going to be important, because, like, they they get to, like, a motel, and, uh... Oh, that reveal, though, was, like... So dumb. You lean over to me, like, oh, what a twist, women never hitchhike. Yeah. That's so bizarre she turned out to be a woman. Like, there was no reason for that to be surprising. <laughs> the most surprising thing about it was that, like, she was supposed to be, like, a hitchhiker... And yet her makeup was goddamn flawless. 
Oh yeah, she's yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got like she perfect had more hair. makeup on than I do right now. <laughs> perfect makeup, long hair, and everything. And these she has like a perfect like fishtail braid. Like yeah, like... yeah. <sighs> they end up like camping because they go to a hotel, but it's booked. So I guess that's the only hotel. Yeah, yeah. He's like, and... uh, he's like, I never asked you folks your names because only the cowboy dude has been talking so far. Um, and he's like, I'm Cowboy Ted. <laughs> and uh and he's like and uh he's like you promised cowboy dan <laughs> and uh he's like and what about you and she like like weird dramatic reveal where she takes down her hood and she's like i'm annie and like like john, oh! even, john even turns around and he's like what annie what <laughs> why is it you've known her for 10 minutes <laughs> girls can't hitchhike um, and so, like, it turns out that there is, like, a Boy Scout jamboree going on at this hotel. Which I guess means this is the only hotel in this section of the country. I guess. So they end up, like, having a camp out, and, like, yeah. Wayne and Annie kind of have a scene where, like, it seems like she's going to end up his love interest. I thought, like, yeah, I thought that was going that direction. Because they or... made a very, like, big point yeah. of pointing out that the dude that she was with was not... A romantic interest that was her cousin oh but i thought too it would go in the direction of like she would end up having a thing for john and he would be like tempted but then yeah i at the very least i thought she was going to be fucking important she's yeah. not oh no they, they steal uh, the car they wake up the next morning and i mean like ted is being sketchy as fuck the second they wake up mm -hmm. he's just like we, we, sh we should take the car we're, 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 we're yeah. gonna take the car we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna borrow your car mate i'm gonna borrow your car go into town bring back some coffee and um, john wayne is asleep and john is like well i don't know yeah like, he's okay. like he's very slightly protesting yeah don't oh, worry, we're don't. gonna take the, uh, we're gonna mm. take the car all right we'll be right back in like five minutes so they take off wayne immediately wakes up and appropriately is giving john shit he's like you're a moron and john's like don't you call me that you're a moron don't call me that and then you're he a like, moron like he pushes him like this yeah and then john turns around and runs into the lake. oh yeah Whoa! <laughs> like he must that actor must really like doing physical comedy because more than once in this movie is he doing something really physically sticky like mm -hmm. when he's sleeping on that couch and something wakes him up and he startles as if an explosion has gone off yeah. in the next room because it's the, the chainsaw outside that's it the chainsaw and he reacts to that as if like the attic just fucking exploded <laughs> it's a real sitcom -y moment and it I'm, really is yeah i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure i saw him in mom's night out in I which, didn't see like, that. Oh, oh, wow, that was you. <laughs> because I've never seen any movie ever. <laughs> if you haven't seen Terminator 2, you haven't seen any movie ever. Let alone Mom's Night Out. Because <laughs> clearly, oh my god, this, I would rather sit through this movie ten whole times than Mom's Night Out again. <laughs> At least this movie was funny. Um, so the hitchhikers, they never show up again, ever. They just disappear. They completely disappear. I thought, I thought that, like, they literally were just going to bring back coffee. I thought that was going to be the joke, yeah. Like, they, like Wayne makes this big deal, mm. and then they come back, and it's like, you should trust people. You don't That's trust anyone. That's what I anyone. thought. I, hell, I thought they were going to show up in Washington at the end. Like, where were you? We've been looking everywhere for you to get you this coffee. <laughs> no, they never show up again. No, never. They even never. make this big deal where like Annie's reading one of the letters and uh he's she's like, Who's Eleanor? And he's like, My mama. And, uh, Eleanor, uh, it's that song from John Paul George. And uh she's oh, like, Where is she? Song. What happened to her? <laughs> um and uh he's like, She died. And uh and like like Annie like looks really upset and she's like, Well, I think Eleanor's a beautiful name and then she like reads the letter and then disappears the next morning, never to be seen again. Yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah. Another time when I'm like where I'm just now thinking of that actually, because you mentioned the thing with the with the hitchhikers after the movie was over, and I was like, Yeah, and now this Yeah, what the fuck? Things just disappear in this fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking 
when they and then John just up and like sells the dude out um when yeah the cops pull him over which it's his it's his own fucking fault because okay yeah they they, they find like this this car that's yeah. for sale outside this house which like did you catch the line that like the girl the little girl stole the car and yeah. put a for sale what the fuck was that mm. uh they find this house that has like a for sale sign on the car in the front yard mm -hmm. and john knocks on the door and this like six seven oh, year old kid yeah. Yeah. answers the door and he's like I, i'm interested in the car and like she doesn't say anything um and he's like he says it again and she's like twelve thousand dollars cash only uh no negotiations and he's like i only have six hundred dollars and she closes the door in his face and uh he's like wait and then he like knocks on it he's like wait no he's got the other six hundred dollars um and so they end up buying this car and then as soon as they get the car um, he's speeding like he's a motherfucker. Like, he, yeah, he Let's just test fucking this baby out. floors it. <laughs> he just floors it, and then mm. it turns out he has like a suspended license and like a warrant. So this is his own fucking fault. So yeah. he gets pulled over, and then he he looks over to John. He's like, "Tell him my name is like Wayne Bishop." No, whatever. he he's like, "Tell him my name is like Edward," and then oh, he's yeah. and then he's like, "You want me to pretend you're your dad?" And he's like, "No, no, tell him my name's Eddie Bishop." Tell him my name's like Eddie. So they get out of the car, and the cop is like, the guy's like, my name's Eddie Bishop. And then the cop looks at John's like, is that true? Is that his name? And John, you know, because, you know, thou shalt not lie, or whatever. So he fucking sells him out. He's like, no. And I'm like, okay, you're so fucking hardcore about that. One, fucking let it go this one goddamn time. And two, you had no problem trying to start physical violence with him a couple of scenes ago. <laughs> they get taken they get taken to jail after that. Um and like uh pretty much out of nowhere, like Wayne starts talking about that car crash. Yeah. And there's just like crying layered mm -hmm. over it like it's supposed to be like he's like oh, remembering yeah. it but it's just it's just weird like mm -hmm. i don't even know how to explain the weirdness of it but like like you hear like tires squealing and then you hear like crying um it sounds like whenever you have the the audio quality of the little kid crying the sound quality that's overlaid over him telling this story sounds like in a video game, like in Left 4 Dead or something, where you're walking by, like, just, like, a crying child or something like that. It's just, it's so weird sounding. Uh -huh. It's really bizarre. Um, but he tells him, yeah, like, that's that's how his mother died. His mom wanted to see the DC memorial, and she mm -hmm. crashed into a bridge and died. Um, a which, car, like, which, by the way, that, is still there. Yeah, that struck me as really bizarre. <laughs> um, but, like... With the way that Wayne's voice is, it comes across, like, unintentionally humorous. That's the thing, because, like, if he had chosen to do a regular fucking voice in this, and not this kind of Godfrey Ho kind of thing, his performance wouldn't be that bad. Like, because that scene... He would kind of be okay if his voice wasn't that distracting. At the end, when he finds the box and he's reading the letter... He would be okay in that if, like, he what he didn't have to do this voice, which I, I don't know why he, he picked it, except for just comedic reasons, which, okay, yeah, there's some silly shtick with his character, sure. <sighs> in a scene, in the scenes where it's supposed to be heavier and more dramatic, it didn't quite work. It was a little yeah. jarring. It was distracting. Like it, it, it did it. Like it came like, and it wasn't like that. Could have in a good movie that could have been a really sad fucking scene. But no, like, not really. Cause it's it's the other guy is the dude playing John is fine in the scene, and like I said, like it's bizarre watching the dude playing Wayne in this because it's like watching. Like, Jay Moore on Saturday Night Live trying to play Patrick Swayze or something, but doing yeah. it in a dramatic scene. Like, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. My um, mama died. My like, mama died. It's almost, like, uh, Sling blade in a way, but without the heavy southern draw, but with still that kind of 
like raspy kind yeah. of voice. Um, hell, it would have made. More oh, sense I remember why he was telling like, him. He was explaining like why. Um, he was like, why, what do you have a warrant out for you for? And he was like, well, Alabama ain't the only state I ain't able to drive through. Which, like... Well, maybe we should have flown! I'm like, okay, so you couldn't drive through Alabama where you have, because you have a warrant. But apparently wherever they were driving through there, he had a warrant too! Yeah, I guess he just has a fucking warrant everywhere. He's going, uh, yeah, he's going out of his way to avoid Alabama, and it doesn't fucking matter because they still get arrested anyway. How? They should have just taken taken a train or flown yeah. or whatever. No, then you there need a convertible been... to take a road trip. And but, a uh, sweet green screen. Yeah, what the reason that he can't that he has warrants and can't go through certain states is because um after his mom died in the car crash, he was like, and then I ran. I ran like a scared little kid and I went to the first convenience store I saw and I robbed it. And then I robbed the one after that. Oh, that don't worry. That pays. That comes around though, because he tries robbing another convenience store with a plastic gun. But it's okay because when he gets arrested, when he gets arrested it's by the their, cop, it's their dad's old sergeant. It just so fucking happens to be Stephen Baldwin, who knows who they are, um, because he says, you know, when I heard that there was a couple of guys who were looking for their daddies from Vietnam, I didn't think much of it. But when I saw your names, I knew exactly who you were. So, forget about the fact that he tried robbing this fucking store. He, yeah, he's like, if that had been real good, you'd have a real problem. And I'm like, I think he would... I, I mean, I'm not <laughs> well-versed in, like, what constitutes as armed robbery, but uh, I'm I can remember sure... right from Raising Arizona, Nicolas Cage still went to jail, even though it wasn't technically armed yeah, robbery. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, having a fake weapon i mean he might not have gotten in as much trouble oh, yeah, but that's but he believes in jesus he still tried to rob somewhere i'm pretty sure like if you just walk up to a store and go give me a which what was with that line that the guy said when he tried he's like he's like hey now this ain't a company franchise this ain't a franchise yeah well you still got money <laughs> uh <laughs> stephen baldwin goes in there puts him in handcuffs takes him back to his place because he knows that he was he was robbing the store for noble reasons, so it's okay. Um, and Stephen Baldwin, who, by the way, looks the same as he did 30 years ago in the Vietnam scenes, except they put a little bit of touch of gray in his hair. That's it. That's it. Just a tiny little bit of gray in his hair and in his eyebrows. Yeah, and he has, like, a scar. Like, I was right below Is that what mouth. that was? I thought he had a fucking herpy. I was like, what is this shit on his lip? What yeah, is this? there was a scar, but his lips were also like super chapped for some reason. <laughs> like the whole time, I'm like, somebody get this dude some chapstick. Oh my fucking god. Oh, all the close ups they were using of him and everybody in this movie. There are a lot of close ups in this. A lot of fucking close ups. Um. Uh, granted, when I make movies, I use a lot of close ups <laughs> too, but I make sure they don't have fucking herpes when I do. <laughs> Maybe that is what it was. I assumed it was like a scar from the war. I want it to be herpes. I do. I want Sergeant Mansfield to have a very questionable private life. With his motorcycle collection. Here you go. He gives them a motorcycle with a sidecar to finish their trip as a gift. Don't you mind that story you tried, Robin. There you go. You go to Washington now. It's a gift. Don't bring it on back now, you hear? Ha, ah, so they make the rest of their trip, and then they, they find the scene of the accident of Wayne's mom in which the remnants of the car is still there, which is bizarre. No yeah. one knew that. Why, why was that still there? So we would know what it was. <laughs> so <laughs> so it, it was there just in case we forgot that that scene involved a car accident, because God forbid they put it in dialogue. We just gotta have the car there, as if this just happened yesterday. <laughs> oh god, I know this is going, like, way back, but, like, the music in this film, the one where, like, he's getting out of the car and it's just, like, America. America. <laughs> 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 they, I kind of do, like, the same thing here, um, where it's just, like, it's something about, like, Jesus and friendship when they're getting the box out of the ground. Yeah, yeah, because it's got the final letter in it, and also the, the dog tags, too. Um, and they do finally make it to D.C., to the wall, to the Vietnam Wall, and 
which in theory is fine, except there's this narration that goes over it. Huh. In which, how, what did it say? The last goddamn line of the movie is, if there's anything I learned from this journey, it's that God, or that, like, God loves you more than any earthly father possibly could. Fuck you! <laughs> really? Like, uh, uh, you could get, first of all, fucking phrasing. Like, that's right up there with the earlier fucking line. And did we mention this this time around? Uh, uh, the uh, uh, women. <laughs> Thank God we have dads. If we didn't, we should. <laughs> okay, that's that's in the jail scene. Um, that's in the jail scene in which he's in which John is talking to Candace Cameron, and she's giving him shit, which good. Like, uh, she's like, "Bail, you're in jail. What? This is this is so unlike you. Like." Uh, if it's, well, if he had just explained what happened, um, but she... Eventually, like, she, she's just kind of like, I have a wedding to plan, I can't deal with this, and then she hangs up, this. um, and, uh, like, in the earlier scene where Wayne was being kind of, like, misogynistic, like, John was having none of it, he was mm-hmm. like, I can't believe you would even say something like that. Yeah. And then in this scene, um, he, like, after Candace hangs up on him, he hangs up the phone, um... And uh, he just goes, ugh, women, this is why we need dads. Yeah, and I had to ask you what he said, because I wanted to make sure I heard that correctly, because it was really out of nowhere, and I'm like, what? It was like a few seconds later, because I like, I lead over, what, what did you say? <laughs> women. Who needs dads? No, this is why we this need is dads. Why we... And I'm like, That's what? That's a really odd line, though, because at no point do they imply that Candace Cameron didn't have a dad, that she was raised by, like, a single mother, or that her mm. parents were lesbians, or... I don't even... I, I, I don't even know. I... I... Oh, my God. I... Huh. And then that, that would final... be interesting in this film, if somebody had a, a lesbian parents oh it goes about as good as the muslim parents and god's not dead which did not go very over very well um uh uh, and and so yeah that final line in this and then that line about dads i'm i'm just sitting there like this is more than i wanted it to be (laughs) like of the of okay of the ones i've seen this year this one little boy old-fashioned um do you believe um this is this is probably the second worst after uh after old-fashioned this one was funny to sit through like yeah. this one was legitimately oh god funny it would have been terrible through. to sit through alone though it would have been i would have had a much easier time sitting through this alone than i did old-fashioned um like oh wow at least i laughed here and there during this movie i wasn't supposed to but at least like the the incompetence of it which was kind of at a level of like kurt cameron saving christmas incompetence they just kind of moved around a little bit more in this movie but like the shit with the green screen and all like the really bad rain effects where like it's just raining in front of the camera but in the background it's perfectly dry and fucking sun's shiny as shit outside I'm oh, pretty God. sure a couple uh, of the Viet Cong were Latino, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you get, like, serious homoerotic vibes from that one scene? Oh, my God! <laughs> I Just the one scene? I was getting it through half of this movie! But, like, there was the one where he's, like, he's talking about... He's, um... They're, like, hiding, um because they like can't make radio contact and so they don't know where where like the where anybody is yeah um and so they're hiding and wayne's dad starts like writing a a letter Mm. um and then they really uh, should be keeping an eye out on things and they're yeah (laughs) um wayne's dad starts writing a letter and um then I, I don't even remember the exact series of events, but, um, John's dad eventually starts talking about, like, like, um, how, like, if he confesses his sins before he dies, like, Jesus will forgive him. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and Wayne's dad is like, why would he forgive me? And, uh, and John's dad is like, because he loves you. 
He loves you more than anything. He loves you more than any woman could. He loves you even more than you love your son. And then they, like, start holding hands, and I'm like, is this some really weird love confession? Like, I honestly, I hope so. I was honestly like, there's no way this is happening in this movie. Oh, I wanted it to happen. <laughs> Hardcore. Like, I've seen this movie. I, I thought they were cowboys in the movie that I saw. <laughs> it honestly seemed very love confession-y. Cause, yeah, because then he's even, he's even like, when we get to paradise, will you be there with me? And he's like, of course, it wouldn't be paradise without you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, between that and also even some of the stuff with John and Wayne. Like John waking up with Wayne's crotch right by his head. And honestly, even given the fact that um, Wayne, or or John in this, kind of gives off a little bit of a vibe every he now and does, then. He kind of does, yeah. Like, he, <laughs> he really kind of does. Like, I don't think it's going to make a difference when Candace Cameron moves in with him. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I think he wants to shack up with the guy from Old Fashioned, with Rick Schwartzwelder. <laughs> uh, would you recommend this? Oh my god, no. <laughs> Are you kidding? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> this is a good party one this Maybe, is like yeah. this is a good party one this is um this is like you watch this along with the identical and kurt cameron saving oh Christmas. yeah for like that i thought you meant recommended as like this is a wonderful film that oh, everyone no. should see no 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 <laughs> no like i mean like in like yeah, yeah no like that of... most fucking definitely yeah yeah to have a movie marathon with this and that the identical and old-fashioned and kurt cameron saving christmas you'll have a really good time yeah you will and this is a movie that in how it's like i realized that I realize that we knock these kind of movies a lot. The movies from Pure Flix and now Samuel Coldwin between this and Saving Christmas. But they're not good. Like, the things that we're talking about with this movie, the flaws... Honestly, most of what we've said have very little to do with this movie being religious. Oh, like, yeah, very it, little. It really is more about the acting, the filmmaking, the dialogue. Like, I just slap her, you know, stuff like that. The dialogue, the random cutaways, the... It, it's not good. These these movies, the, the quality of them, they're... Yeah, they're really, really cheesy, but they're... Yeah, taking what, the religious stuff out of this movie wouldn't make me think this movie was good. No, no, um hell there's been somewhere i've been like totally passable on like little boy wasn't that good but i mean it's it's the only one of these movies that really kind of was about being a christian um heaven is for real wasn't good but it wasn't but filmmaking wise fine it was passable in terms of how it was directed and everything these movies these pure flicks movies between this god's not dead old-fashioned and stuff like that it's it's not good filmmaking mm -hmm. and if you are gonna like this movie it's gonna be the common theme that I see with positive comments and reviews of it which is just if you're going to something like this and all you want them to do is just talk about God or something and that will make you like the movie which is the common theme through positive viewer feedback on movies like this then of course you are probably going to like this because that's all you want out of the movie whatever okay fine um i mean to each their own on that but there's there's a common thing that i always see with movies like this in terms of reviews and it's um and I know you see this a lot with, like, dissent from, say, a critic who doesn't like, like, a superhero movie that all the other critics like, and then one doesn't, and you see a lot of bombardment of angry commenters and stuff like that. You see that with these kind of movies, too. Go on, like, Variety.com and look at, like, the review for Old Fashioned and stuff like that, and read the com like, the makers of these movies deliberately send people to Rotten Tomatoes, to IMDb, to negative reviews of it, like on Variety, and they have people 
bombard them with comments. They always try to up the star rating on IMDb or the the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. The like this is the only series, the only kind of movies where I can think of where that happens, and it happens all the time. Not even like with just Saving Christmas. That happened with the identical, where they were trying to send people to Rotten Tomatoes to up the score and stuff like that. Like hell, if you go to the Wikipedia article for Old Fashioned, you can tell it's been edited it has been severely edited and twisted yeah it says it says something like oh well 12 percent of mainstream critics didn't like it but the audience score was like 92 and then they take out all of the negative review quotes and keep in the positive and i know this because at one point i was one of the negative review i saw quotes that yeah there. they take all that out they just keep the positive and then the father of the guy who made uh, the dad or stepdad of the dude who made Old Fashioned got on Variety and started yelling at the reviewer. Like, <laughs> if this movie's so bad, how come at my showing it got a standing ovation? <laughs> uh, well, he would love Transformers 3. <laughs> that got a standing ovation. Standing ovation equals good movie. Everyone knows this. <laughs> Fuck. And that might happen again with this. It happens with all of all of them. I don't know. This movie only has like two reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, but yeah, I those are my final thoughts on it. I mean, it was it's funny. <laughs> it was it was yeah. It's like there with the identical movies like that where you are kind of like I'm so glad I'm here seeing this. I love this shit. This is like m like bad movie meccas, and I fucking love this shit. I fucking look forward to all of these movies coming out. I was so out. excited to go to this movie. Was it everything you wanted it to be? Oh my god! Within the first four minutes, <laughs> I even said that as mm -hmm. soon as Candace Cameron had her line of like I can't wait until we're married so we can live together. I was like, this movie is everything I wanted. Oh, yes. Yes. It, it, we, it was worth driving 40 minutes out of our way to go see this. The only screening of it showing anywhere. They were showing it in a section of the theater that was closed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, there were no lights on. The concession stand was broke. But there was a fully stocked bar. <laughs> there was. There was a fully stocked bar. Mm -hmm. Oh, so happy. And you can get a mocha that's 90% chocolate syrup. I have a feeling they don't make those a lot. When the guy asked me, so is mocha like chocolate or something? <laughs> yes. I forgot about that. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, man. All right. So I think the next thing we're seeing is probably when we get back to Springfield. And it's uh, Magic Mike XXL. I hope that has Jesus in it. <laughs> and a guy from Duck Dynasty. Fuck. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>